Tonight, by the time they are done here, they will have eaten most of it. But what they haven't eaten, what is unpalatable, that will be mulched. And that mulch will protect the soil from the coming dry season, help the water from the remaining rains percolate, and help regenerate this whole landscape. This too is what the cycle of life is all about. The cows are kept inside this paddock by these electrified wires, which are moving every day. Right at the back there is the paddock they were in yesterday. And there, the seeds are ready to germinate. The land has been manured. The mulch is down to protect the soil. And any disease that was brought there by the cows will stay there and die before they come back at the next season. Meanwhile, this glorious spectacle attracts tourists, and that is money. Just like these cows, the healthiest cows in Zambia, mean money for the 57 families that together own them. That, too, is part of the cycle of life. When the communal herd started here in Panchia, the land everywhere looked like this, and I am standing on a path. After five years of this kind of grazing, Look at how the grass is growing and our other plants are coming in. For the first time in 25 years, Matthias, the head herder, says he has seen kudu and zebra come back to the land, which was dead and is now reviving. That, too, is part of the cycle of life. We are in Munali, about 60 kilometers south of Lusaka. And a hundred years ago, this land was tall trees and millions of animals browsing under it with rich grassland. But then the trees got cut. The animals got hunted out. The trees survive still. Look at them. They're here. They're there. They're everywhere. But they're no more animals. And look at what's happening to the soil. The soil has become hard as rock. You, you, can, you can't even... As, even with my fingernails, I cannot break through that crust. And yet, under that crust, there are still seeds. Millions of seeds. The seeds of grasses that evolved to survive a few years of drought and to wait for conditions to be good again. This place is grazed. People have cows. But the grazing is a disaster. The cows are just eating the most palatable grasses and slowly killing them one by one, revealing this dead soil in between. If you change these grazing patterns, if you get the cows to graze once and then let the land rest, if you bunch them together to create lots of little cups with their hooves, which are stronger than my fingernails, to break that pan, to make little cups that can collect the rainwater, these seeds will germinate again. The grass will come back. And is that enough? Almost. But you still need to do one thing. You need to worry about the trees. The animals will do the pruning. But you want a tree that's shaped by humans, not a tree that's shaped by animals. So what you want to do is you take this tree and you look at the number of children it has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No family can feed eight children on a poor soil like this. So what you want to do is sacrifice some of the children. Prune it, prune it right back. Take the strongest here, we keep this one. Keep this one because this one is pointing straight up and you want the tree to start growing up as quickly as possible. And you do these two things. You manage the regeneration of the trees and you manage the grazing of your cattle and our children will be able to come here and never even imagine that this place was once so degraded. That is the circle of life, man. <laughs>